Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I intend and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The seed that fell into good soil yielded a hundredfold. The seed that fell into good soil yielded a hundredfold. You visit the earth, give it water, you fill it with riches. God's ever-flowing river brings over to prepare the grain. The seed that fell into good soil yielded a hundredfold. And thus you provide for the earth. You drench its furrows. You level it, soften it with showers. You bless its growth. The seed that fell into good soil yielded a hundredfold. You crown the year with your bounty. Abundance flows in your pathways. In pastures of the desert it flows. The seed that fell into good soil yielded a hundredfold. The hills are girded with joy. The meadows clothed with flocks. The valleys are decked with wheat. They shout for joy. Yes, they sing. The seed that fell into good soil yielded a hundredfold. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not of its own will, but by the will of him who subjected it in hope because the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the glorious liberty of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning with labor pains together until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The seed is the word of God, and the sower is Christ. All who find him will abide forever. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him. 
so that he got into a boat and sat there, and the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they had not much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil, and when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no roots, they withered away. Other seeds fell upon thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Parables. Jesus tells many of them during his ministry. What are these stories? Often they sound so ordinary, so banal. What does he seek to achieve through these simple stories derived from the lives of the simple people he frequented, farmers, housewives, traders, and handy men and women? He concludes the parables today by saying, Whoever has ears ought to hear, but what exactly ought we to hear? Today, we begin reading chapter 13 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, and we will read it in its entirety starting today and over the next two Sundays. This is Jesus' discourse on parables. It is worthwhile remembering that this long discourse has a central place in the Gospel of Matthew, the third of the five sermons that Jesus addresses to his disciples. Parables constitute a central element in the Old Testament, the scriptures of Israel. The narrative that best illustrates the purpose of the parable in the life of the people of God is the one about the poor man and his ewe lamb, in 2 Samuel, King David has descended into the depths of sin. He has spotted a woman he desires from the rooftop of his palace. He has taken her and gotten her pregnant. He has failed to convince her husband, away fighting for David at the front, to go home and be with his wife to cover David's sin. And so he plots the murder of her husband. He then brings the woman into his household. Adultery, lying, and finally murder. The king is completely unconscious of his wrongdoing. He is the king, isn't he? He can do whatever he wants. Laws are for other people. Sounds a little familiar now. It is at this point that Nathan the prophet comes to him and tells him about the poor man's you plundered by the rich man who makes a meal of it for passing guests, unwilling to dip into his own pocket. David, hearing the parable, is filled with fury. He pronounces, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. The parable has caught the conscience of the king. The simple story has awakened in him what his own actions had anesthetized. Of course, the parable has provoked David to pass judgment on himself. He has done what the rich man did to the poor one. But now the parable he has heard with his ears has cut through to his heart, which had been blinded, blinded and hardened by his eyes. Now he can repent because he has heard Having heard the parable, David becomes a model of repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. 
for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. The parables that Jesus tells have the same aim of wakening us up. First of all, we are challenged to listen to Holy Scripture. Our salvation depends on listening. Our eyes tend to lead us astray. Remember seeing the fruit in the Garden of Eden, causing Adam and Eve to forget what they had heard from God. David, seeing Uriah's wife, caused him to forget the word of God he had heard about adultery, lying, and murder. Our eyes lead us astray so often, and Jesus challenges us to use our ears. We must hear just as Israel in the Old Testament was challenged, Hear, O Israel. The word must penetrate our hearts so that we can see with our hearts formed by the word and not with fleshy eyes. Yes, as strange as it sounds, we must see with our ears if we do indeed allow the parables we hear to fashion what we see, we will see what cannot yet be seen, at least not by eyes of flesh and blood. We will see the kingdom of God. These simple stories about seeds and light, bread and treasure, open, us a vis- open up a vision of the kingdom already among us through Jesus' preaching, but not yet perceptible by flesh and blood. The parables are the gateway to the kingdom. We are called not only to live in, but also to proclaim. This proclamation depends on listening carefully, listening over and over again, letting the parables wash over us and speak to us. By their very nature, they are inexhaustible. In different circumstances, they sound a little different suggesting new ways to understand them. Most important of all, they are calls to awaken from sleep, to seek again the kingdom of God already among us, and to live according to the word we have heard. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the The kingdom, kingdom, the power, and and the glory glory are yours, now and and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word. And help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.